Hello. How's everybody? Yeah, I've got my white stuff on, on my eyes. Haven't done anything else yet. I need to, like, work through some of these silly palettes. Now, this one I am going to blame on Trixie Mattel and Kim Chi. They did a mukbang of Chipotle food while holding up this Chipotle um, palette, and then they did their looks with the Chipotle palette. And I'm like, okay, I kind of like Chipotle food, and I love to watch Trixie Mattel and Kim Chi, and this is kind of interesting. It's a little weird. Yeah, it's laid out kind of like the food line at a Chipotle, but, you know, I figured I'd at least see how it goes, since it's an elf palette, and we all know about me and elf. No, I am not sponsored. No, they don't know me from Adam's house cat. This is also my current setup. When we do spring cleaning or fall cleaning, we end up rearranging furniture. So where I had my setup before, on the other side of the room with the gray wall. Now I have a yellow wall. It's how it is. I still haven't gotten everything just right yet. I still think my board is a little too high. But, you know, it's it's not too bad. And I don't ha I don't have my little shelf with all my tchotchkes. Oh, well. Anyway. Just got my final grade on the class I'm just finished. I am still doing my A work. This one was on linguistics. I've gone off about it a couple of times already on a couple of videos. All of my final project stuff came back as A's. My final discussion came back as an A. The class ended as an A. So, yeah, I'm not too sad. I'm a little sad because I was having fun with this class. On top of it, the teacher was an absolute hoot. I've run into a few teachers that just, they're kind of dull. And, and some of them are just absolute hoots. And I really miss them once the class is over. Because they're fun. They're engaging. They keep you interested. Which I appreciate. They're enough of a stiff competition for my grandchildren that I can stay engaged in the class which I think is just delightful. Oh, yeah. Need to put some more moisturizer on that eye this evening. This one decided to be a bit... drier appearing than this one. Yeah, see all, all those creases and all that chicken skin up in there. Welcome to old age. Now I know there are some people who do not happen to be quite as old as I am, but they still have the wrinkles in the chicken skin because they've had other things going on. And they have issues. 
and they have stuff. But I'm just an old part. Um, plus, having lost about 150 pounds so far. Yeah, at one point, I was 450, then change. And now I'm down around 265. Yeah, 265. And while the weight is not perfect, and probably never will be, my clothes fit better. I'm a little healthier. The only reason I know what my weight is is because I've been to the doctor recently. I don't weigh myself often. Usually the doctor is plenty. I go by the way my clothing fits and how I feel more than anything else. And losing a bit of weight makes it easier for me to walk. I have lousy joints. Another one of those getting old kind of things that, like, creeps up on you. Sometimes you don't even have to get that old. My elbows start... If you've ever had one of the older Barbie dolls that's got the positionable arms and legs, that the little ratchet thing snapped really loud... That's what my elbows have sounded like for about 15 years now. So, yeah. It's an interesting situation. I've got a piece of rag down here that I used to clean my brushes off. I, I made my own DIY color switch and I've had one of the other commercially made color switches not the one that cost forever more big bucks for somebody's name to be on it but I discovered after my inexpensive attempts that color switches can be a little rough on your brushes so I just I took the advice of a couple of people online, and I just use a rough cloth. You know, I do my little crochet claws and do those, or, you know, just a regular washcloth or something like anything like that. Not a big deal. It takes the color off, which is just fine by me. Now, there are some interesting colors in this. And I'm going here. Let's just see what we got. Now, like a lot of things from Elf, there isn't anything in the palette that specifically tells you what the colors are after you get it out of the box and everything. And me being me, I got it out of the box, pitched the box. I don't keep boxes. And it's like they've got things that are like obviously guacamole because it's green. And a little lettuce. 
and the beans and the rice and the cheese and all that stuff. So, you know, it's basically just going right down the Chipotle bar and going, yes, some of this, some of that, some of the other. Yeah, put that in, don't put that in, that kind of thing. So you've got all kinds of different food colors to work with, which I think is kind of nifty. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see it, but I used a vegan color semi-permanent called bright and used a color shade they called rose and i didn't relighten my hair since i did the metallic silver but i kind of like it it's it's kind of pale it's not really intense color without doing a a bleach i don't there's, you know, my roots are still pretty dark, but the ends were still, you know, fairly light. So I just went ahead and stuck it on there. The reason I've got all these funny looking hairpins and clips in my hair is because after I finished with the color, I put some pin curls in. And then when I was going to take the pin curls out, originally and do this video I got waylaid by things so it, and just didn't think about it and the pin curls stayed and I got up this morning second night full of pin curls no third night full of pin curls without rearranging anything and some of them had fallen out partially and some of them had gotten fuzzed up from the straps on the CPAP and it just so I took them out and they did not want to do anything that I wanted them to do so I tried brushing them and that just made it worse so I kind of brushed it into something that resembled a shape and took a bunch of my little flower clips and pins and just went zoopita 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 better known as camouflage. So, yeah, there we go. Quite a mess, huh? Anyway, I'm currently on the online equivalent of spring break. I've got a week off until the next class. Now, this is Tuesday of the off week. And this means that while I'm not doing class, I've got pretty close to a solid week where I can do writing that has absolutely nothing to do with graded work, which means I'll get some more work done on the book. Thank you. I have got to get more work done. You can't print, you can't publish the book until it's done. It's It just works that way. And you can't work on the book unless you've got the time to do it. And since I take my classes pretty seriously, I can't just not do the classes to be able to work on the book. It just, it, I don't work that way. I have to put my whole effort and attention into one or the other.
Now, for those of you who are actually interested in the book, I will be starting a Patreon. And I will be working with Angie from 4F Beauty to get at least some of it on the Patreon in audio form. No, you are not going to get the whole book that way. You will get parts. Once it's ready for publication, there will be a audio version available that, again, Angie is going to be my reader because I love her voice and she does some really, really amazing ASMR stuff anyway. So, yeah, there will be Angie. And you will get portions of the book on Patreon. Hopefully, it'll be enough to whet your appetite to come after the book itself once I'm putting it out to the public. If you are not into fantasy or science fiction, this is probably not the book for you. I am using science as a basis for the science fiction. We are talking about physics and entanglement theory And the possibility of using physics and the entanglement theory to crack through between dimensions in a multiverse. The concept being that all of the creatures from our mythology are real. They just happen to exist in a different plane of existence. And only occasionally does the multiverse have availability to more than one dimension at a time to allow them to be part of our reality. And a young physicist has decided that she wants to see if she can crack the code. Thereby hangs a tale. Now, me being me, there is definitely some romance in this. A little more than some people might like. But, it's not overt erotica. Is just not. This is not that book. Do I write that kind of stuff? Oh yeah. Is it in this book? No. That's not what this book is about. This book is part of a series. We basically have some members of the alternate dimensions who want to control for themselves, for their own purposes, all of the dimensional gateways. There are some people on the different dimensional the different dimensional pathways who want to control 
access to the other dimensions only because it could be chaotic if a bunch of people just started bouncing through And, you know, you gotta, gotta give them a little credit for that one. Humans are chaotic. And if you don't think so, go raise a bunch of little boys. Or a bunch of little girls. Or a bunch of kids in general. And when you're talking about kids, yes, they're chaotic because they don't understand all of the stuff that the grown-ups have learned. Or we hope they have learned. So you then look at people from a different dimension that are not only aware that these gateways exist and the thing that this scientist is attempting to do does work is relevant dot 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 but the humans don't know about it or if they think they know about it they still don't know about it And they're basically the little kids when it comes to misbehaving because they don't know any better. I'll be right back. Hello, this is Editing Ann. Um, Anyway, I wanted to mention something that I had meant to put in earlier, which is if I am following your channel, which I do for most of the people that follow me, and a few more besides, um, the, the, the time thing kind of goes the same way there. I watch all your videos. I do. I put it on to watch later and I run them in the background while I am doing other stuff. I am giving you your full amount of time and covering all of the advertisements as well. I don't always get back through to put a thumbs up or a comment or something like that, but I am watching. I do support those who try and support me. I try and keep up with everybody. You just may not necessarily see the uh, the results offhand. Anyway, bye. I'm back. Didn't want to scare anybody with the honking of the horn. My nose is just on a rampage lately. It's like, yes, Spring is here. Just ask me about the spring allergy season. Oy. Let's see. Which brush do I want now? Now! There. That one will work. I don't know. Let's try a different one. Just because. Do, 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 do. Set that down there. Grab up my little spritz bottle that I use for my brushes. Wherever I stuck it this time. Yeah, I'm still trying to get my desk straightened out. I had to completely disassemble the top of the desk so I could move the desk without having anything fall off, bust, crack, and otherwise spill. 
you know, it just. Trying to do it sensibly. Hush you. Yes, I know I'm not sensible. In some cases, I'm insensible. But, you know, so you've got some of the mythology creatures that our scientist encounters. And they're going, how the hoo-ha did you do this? And she's going, what do you mean, how did I do it? And they said, well, you ought to know. You're the one who busted through the portal gate. And she's going, oh, no, 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 no. No, no, I can't have done it that way. I No, I can't have done it that way. Because to do it that way doesn't help my research whatsoever. There's no proof. There's no control. There's no data. And they're going, you meant you were trying to do this and you didn't realize you had done it. And she said that I'm not in the, I wasn't in the correct lab. I was at my little home lab, which really doesn't have any of the equipment. I'm still trying to figure that one out. And, and it needed to be in, in a authorized lab under the correct conditions for recording everything so that I would be able to publish a paper that could be peer-reviewed properly to be able to prove that this was possible. This cannot be happening this way, at which point the citizen of the other dimension is like going, hold up. We got to figure this out. <laughs> because we can't just have people blowing through the portal gates on their own whenever they want with no control factors so that people on this side actually no, something's coming through the gate. And, yeah, they've got these really nice portal gates. But, you know, what do you do if you've got these really nice portal gates all set up? But people have to clock time and get permission to go back and forth and have to let other people know they're going back and forth so there are no collisions and all that lovely stuff. And then you've got Ms. Random Element here. who came through without a, without so much as a how do you do. Mainly because she had a temper tantrum in her lab and threw something, which impacted with something, which set off a chain reaction. And we're still not sure how that happened, considering. But... You now have her with access back and forth to a single other dimension, unless the citizens of other said dimension give her access to their equipment and further dimensions. Some of the citizens of some of the further dimensions 
are already on Earth. The particular Earth dimension that us humans occupy. And there's a bunch of them that are running around trying to gather stuff, materials, bits and pieces, so they can control these gates and control all of them. And there's some other people running around trying to find all the gates so they can at least put stabilizer equipment on them so that if somebody comes through it signals the other side and lets people know that something's coming through so you've got the the basic repair types running around and you've got the human trying to figure out what in the heck she did You've got the people that she dropped in on trying to figure out what in the heck she did and put a plug in it so that it doesn't happen again without some sort of warning. And to top it off, you've got people trying to interfere with what everybody else is doing because they just want to make a monkey out of everything. They want to run the whole shebang and they want it to be under their control completely. And, you know, they're figuring they can make some loot off of access if they've got control over the whole thing. Now, the people trying to get control over the whole thing are the only ones that are going to be pretty much kind of constant in the story. The, there, this one is turning into, I didn't plan on doing a series, but it's turning into a series. There will be other other individuals going back and forth without planning to. From different walks of life, encountering the citizens of other dimensions, but the ones that are causing all the we want to own it all trouble will be the only constant. I don't know how many books this is actually going to turn into. We shall see. I am not normally a series romance type person. I will read such things, but some of them just get to be a little much. You get some of them that are like, you end up with a bunch of like a coven of vampires or a bunch of family style shifters or something like that. And they just go right on down the line with a series of books where each of the members of said group ends up with their fated mate and in some cases get very erotic. Now, I like shifter stories. I like erotic stories. Don't judge. Shush. 
but every so often you have to read something else and some of the series writers for some of this type of of niche romance you can pick up the erotic scenes from one book and plug it into the next one and the next one and the next if you manage to grab hold of the series as like a book collection because it's been out long enough that they're starting to do like you know one to four and then five to eight and that kind of thing you can literally because you're reading them back to back in quick succession you can see some of the, the yeah, they did that. And, you know, there's this, you do this, then you do this, then you do this, and then you do slot, a, you know, tab, tab B into slot A. And Every single one of them follows the exact same pattern. Too many of them, the, the vocabulary and the dialogue hit the exact same notes. And it's like, dude, seriously, could we not be identical? It would really be nice if we could not be identical. So, yeah. I try real hard not to go that way with anything that I write unless I'm specifically writing an erotic fantasy, at which point all bets are off. But those are usually standalone and they don't all, you know, I don't have a whole series of like brothers who all make love to their fated mates in exactly the same way. I'm just, that's just too twitchy for me. There's erotic and then there's, what the hell? You know, it just, what the hell? Okay, I'm going to slap some eyebrows on here. And then I'm going to put some other stuff on, probably my base. And then start working the rest of this out with what I intend to finish it like. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Doodly, doodly, do. Now, the other thing is, yes, I've already started working on book two of this series. And I'm going to tell you, if you have a problem with LGBT plus friendly material, don't pick up my books. Just don't bother. You won't like it. Because even the cis couples do not have a solidly cis book story. Ain't doing all this cis hat routine all on its own because I'm figuring 
considering some of the mythology, there are some not cis, not het, members of other species and or dimensional citizens out there. And if they are out there and encounter someone who is compatible from another dimensional system, there may be some sparks. So, if that kind of thing disturbs you, go on about your business. Leave my books alone. And let me tell you, if you choose to pick up my books, even after the warnings, don't at me. I told you up front. So if it bugs you, don't read it. Yeah, this pencil is is Model Co. This is one of the ones out of my box, out of my birch box. I think it's kind of neat. Okay, eyebrows are on. Eyes mostly done. I have some fiddling to do yet. I'm gonna go put the rest of my base and stuff on. So I'll be back. Okay, base is on. Throw a powder at it and let's dust off a little. Now, this time I know you guys know about me and Elf and my love thereof. You know I'm not sponsored. I'm not sponsored by AOA Studio either, but I'm using mostly AOA Studio stuff today. This is the BB cream. This is the Wonder Skin Primer. This is their Perfect Setting Powder. I've got some blush and bronzer over here, all that stuff. So, let's see. Go back in here with this little pale shimmer right there. Drag it along this way. Now, because of the allergy season, I am not putting underliner on those lower lash lines. I'm not, I'm just not. I just ain't. I will play with some of the other colors and run some stuff around under there just to show that I've been there, but I'm not going to get all crazy up under my eyes, because if I do that, it's just going to get washed off when my eyes decide to water. And I have put a bit of the darker color over here up under up along the top lashes like eyeliner a little bit and then out to the sides a little bit just for the heck of it but no I haven't done anything drastic there either. 
and I'm probably not going to put a standard eyeliner on for the same reason. Because once my eyes start watering, everything just goes. I'm not thrilled with the Chipotle palette. The This brown gets really muddy really quick. It doesn't stay to its color. And the shimmers just don't much. I'm not thrilled. Just not. And yes, I have sprayed these at least sprayed these eyes at least once now. Just not a favorite. We will see how long I actually keep that one. I keep reminding people I do have grandchildren. And I have grandchildren that like makeup. I keep my grandchildren for a reason. They're fun to pass things off to that I'm not thrilled with. Because they don't care. They just want colors to mess with. Alright, let's go ahead and finish up this Mishima. Now, this one I bought through AOA Studio, but it's not, excuse me, it's not an AOA. It's a Malibu Glitz. Now, I like some of the Malibu Glitz stuff just because. Matter of fact, one of my favorite palettes that's all mattes called Street Ink is a Malibu Glitz. And it just, it's wonderful. But this is kind of a beigey bronzer. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, this one's just called Champagne. I mean, it's it's very pale, and so am I currently. It's not that much different in shade than the butter bronzer I picked up not so long ago. So, doesn't bother me. I do pick up one that's a little darker for during the summer, but not that much darker because for one thing, I don't do a lot of going out in the sun because of my autoimmune issues, because some of them happen to be UV reactive. And I try really, really hard not to annoy my autoimmune issues by going out in too much sunlight. One of the problems with going out in sunlight with UV reactive autoimmune issues is that is the, the minute the sunlight hits you, you start feeling worse. You don't even have to wait for it very long. You just start feeling worse. You can go out feeling like you had a wonderful night's sleep. You're ready to face your day. You're going to go out and do stuff. And as soon as you hit the sunlight, you're screwed. All of a sudden, you no longer have all the energy you thought you did. The, 
UV reaction will steal whatever energy you thought you had. Just take it away. Drives me crazy. It was even worse before I figured it out. Because I'd be feeling great and make plans to go out and get a bunch of my friends together and we'd go to do something and as soon as we got out of the house and into the sunlight, I was ready to go back and, and get back in bed. And they all thought I was crazy. I used to love to go crawling over huge flea markets and yard sales and stuff like that until it got bad enough that all I had to do was even consider, just even think about going out, getting in the car, wandering around looking for flea markets, like the big ones out in fields and stuff, old stadiums and drive-in theaters. Now, that's AOA Studio Perfect Blush in Delight. I like it. It's pretty. It's pretty. AOA Studio. Perfect. Highlighter. In Empress. Time to glow. Now, I don't know what the lighting is going to look like. When I started this, it was pretty pretty light in here. But, like usual, I'm running long. And the, the sunlight has moved to the other side of the house. It's still coming in a window in this room, but... It's over there instead of back here. I've got my studio light on. I've got this one reflector box here with a ring light. We shall see. I may have to do a little light edit. See, glowy, glowy. Usually with the, the light setup that I've had, that I've been using, which is this, usually at the other wall, I was having to turn the light down in edit. Because it was so hot, it was washing me out. I'll have to see. All righty. This one is a physician's formula. Believe it or not, I happen to think physician's formula is a little pricey for what it is. But I picked up three because they had a 75% off sale over at my Rite Aid. <laughs> and this is one of my favorite ones. This one is called 
red storative effects. It's sort of red, it's sort of not, it's sort of brown. Anyway. There we go. Mostly. Still really need to put on some mascara. Yeah, I've got some AOA Studio mascara over there. Got Elf. Got some CoverGirl. Got some more eyelash serum in, so I'm working on getting my eyelashes built back up. I need to remember to not stick the wand in my eye. Sticking the wand in your eye really doesn't help with the watering bit. Now I'm considering doing kind of a book club maybe once a month kind of thing with some of the other stuff that I read. If anybody's interested, let me know. I would probably do something like I'm doing now, discussing the book, while I'm putting some stuff on my face, give you a little bit of both. I'm just trying to think of some things to maybe drive a little more traffic. See if I can't get off of this slump. Now, most of the books that I pick up Granted, a lot of you don't like Amazon. However, I started with a Kindle book and I've been using Kindle since the Christmas of 2011. So, I've got well over 500 books in my Kindle library. And since I can find freebies and 99 cent books on the Kindle app pretty much any old time. Which happens a lot with new authors. I'm not giving it up. 
part of my plan with my book is to use Kindle. Um, yes, I know. Lots of people don't like Amazon. I get it. I'm also going to be using Sparks, which is an Ingram product, to publish the book. Through Sparks, you can get a print version. The Amazon version is strictly going to be electronic and vocal. So, there you go. Anyway, if that bugs you, I'm sorry. I have to do what I can do, how I can do it. I will see about putting a different application group together as I get closer, if I can find one that does what I need it to do. I'm trying. Now, with the Patreon, I may act, may also be putting bits of my poetry, some of my, not for general publication, fan fictions, um, all manner of little things. We shall see. I'm still debating the Patreon. My website is almost finished. I want to have a publication date to be able to put on the website before I send it out live. So, you know, I want to have something relevant to put on there, you know? I can tell people about the book, but if I don't have even an estimate for a publication date, that's not necessarily a good thing. Anyhow, there we are. Tell me what you think. Oh yeah, my newest plugs. The lower one says, stay weird. The upper one is a nebula yin-yang, which I think is kind of cool. Ta -da -da. Let me know what you think. Remember, CDC has now said that if you are fully vaccinated, and are not standing in a crowd while you are outside, you do not have to wear your mask outside. Now, if it's just you and a couple other people that are part of your bubble, you're okay. But not in a big crowd of, of mixed individuals that you don't know. Okay? Okay. We've been having ourselves. We've been doing the right thing. So now we are at a point where they can start loosening up some of this stuff. Thank goodness. We're finally getting somewhere. I didn't think we would get anywhere anytime soon, you know? It just, it's scary. It's scary that people think that, that being asked to take care of themselves and the community around them is, is so heinous that it constitutes a loss of freedoms. It's like, dude, we've had no shirt, no shoes, no service forever. Same thing as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, in a crowd or in an in a private location, which is stores, banks, restaurant, that is private property, guys. That is not public property. It's private property. Yes, they can require you to wear your mask. 
No, really. Ask all the people that have thought they were somewhere where they could get away with it and got themselves arrested for acting a fool on private property. Go ahead. Maintain your distance. Wear your mask if you are supposed to. Get your vaccine. I've had mine. Two shots of Moderna. I survived. I was a little ill. I survived. I'm fine. Nothing's changed. My husband got through his shots. He had a little worse reaction to the second shot than I did. But he's gotten through it. And we are back to doing our thing. Stay out of trouble. Don't cause no trouble. If somebody decides they need to cause trouble with you, finish it. Self-defense is a whole nother ball of beans. Be good.